Hello, welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, National Sales Manager for Bone Adhesive. And I'm Rob Johnson from Bona Training. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first. We have two guests with us today. One is Sprig Lynn, who a lot of people know. And the other guy is a gentleman named Steve, and I have no idea any background <laughs> information about Steve. I don't know who he is, where he's from, what he does, in the slightest. Is this oh. going to be like a game show? Do we have to guess who Steve is and what he does? It kind of sounds that way. Steve, why don't That's you tell us, tell yeah. us who, you, who you are? And Guessing is good. I, I, I've been around, and I know I've met you guys before uh, at different shows. Um, I started uh, doing wood floors in 1989 and um, pretty early on attended some NWFA stuff. Uh, it was a little loose, but I would say that it was training. It was a couple day um, class and I actually bought some equipment at that class. Hmm. Um, and then I've been doing it ever since. And we're... Uh, we're the best little company that you've never heard of and uh all right we don't uh we don't advertise and we try and do uh you know really great stuff and uh you know that's kind of where are you located at steve we're in uh the uh, minneapolis suburb called hopkins uh, okay uh, Minnesota. Well, welcome to the podcast. We're glad you're here. Thanks for having me. Yes. And Sprig, you wanted to introduce yourself. I mean, uh, um, uh, you probably do a better job than I will, or Rob, for sure. Well, <laughs> my name is Sprig Lynn. I'm with Universal Floors Incorporated in Washington, D.C. We're a family-owned and operated company for approximately 70 years, and we're into wood floors just like everybody's that's listening to this podcast and let, let me tell you something about steve steve won't tell you but that guy is a guru when it comes to colors he's fantastic with colors he can re-engineer reverse engineer he can figure out three three four different ways to reproduce that color and it's amazing and and that's how i heard about him so i i hunted him down and, All right. uh, and started a good relationship with him. Well, that's a and, good. Let's. Yeah, I don't want to. I started talking. I started stalking Sprig and asking him questions about wax and what's old is what's old is new. Everybody thinks oh, we're always after the newest thing, and and I know you guys. You know, you work for Bona, and Bona's been on the cutting edge for years and years and years, as long as I've been a contractor. <clears throat> but I'm not afraid to look back and say, what did they used to do? And I would pester every single time I waxed a floor, even when I knew all the answers, I'd always call Sprig. So I've always been a fan of Universal, and... I've always been a fan of Spriggs and, uh, you know, no matter what he says, uh, um, you know, he great guy. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's kind of what this topic is, is going to be about today is relationships. And, uh, I don't want to get away from, from this podcast without delving a little bit more into colors with you. Cause I think that's always an interesting topic. And especially where Sprig is concerned, where, I mean, he's working on some, some of the oldest, most prestigious buildings in America. Uh, when I imagine there's a lot of reverse engineering being done uh, and discovery and, and what have you to find out, uh, you know, where it started and what you need to do to get back to that color. So, uh, yeah, I think that would be an interesting to, um, so I'm glad you're on that. That will be a good topic to talk about as well. Great. Uh, Wayne, I'll tell you one thing that Steve does that he, he has got me, got my attention, which I do a lot more is, he takes detailed notes of everything he does when he's trying to create something or reverse engineer. And it, it is so valuable to go back to those notes. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, I, I brought him to the White House because they wanted us to reproduce a particular floor, a particular color, sheen, the whole nine yards without using what, what was used because it had a lot of smell to it. It had some issues, but 
they wanted to reproduce it. So we were down in the carpentry shop and Steve came in and we, we had to run all the way down the carpentry shop, do our samples, run all the way up to the East room, ballroom in the White House, go back down. And I think he checked his phone at the end of the day. He walked seven miles that day up and down to dial in <laughs> his color. But, but but I'm telling you, he, he'll write down and, I, and I'll forget 15 minutes later and I'll say, Steve, what what what'd you do here? And, and and he has it all detailed out. It's absolutely incredible. Well, that's interesting. And but, say it again, Steve. It's a it's a hard lesson to learn when you work really hard on something, and whether that's a relationship or a bid, or a color, or a takeoff, or you know tuning up your machine. If you, if you don't, if you don't, if you're for, if I'm, I'm scattered, I'm all over the place. And if I don't make a note and it might be cryptic, but if I don't make a note, then I, then, then I get really excited when I hit that color or I tune the machine up or I, um, am successful reaching someone that I really want to reach and, and work for. Right. If I don't, if I can't refer back to the notes, then, then all that work is, is in jeopardy. I could lose that color if I don't know how to reproduce it. And not everybody understands that some of the things we use to make a color are, are either positive or negative reactive um, processes. If you, if you don't know the what it is that you're using it's it's a uh it's a it's a real frustrating thing to not be able to reproduce it so, so I, I got a couple comments about that one is um well uh, rob frequently makes fun of me because i i i'm a huge note taker and uh, i have a i have a a notebook that goes back over 20 years and it's called it's the note on, on the front page it says stan says and stan, stan is the guy that i used to work for and uh, whenever I learned anything, I would I would put it in that book. And uh, then if I learned an a, a, a installation technique that helped, I would write that down. Any little thing I learned, any tips along the way, I would write down, and I would re and be able to refer back to them. And um, and then it got even so on jobs. If I did a certain thing on a job or stain color or whatever, I'd always put it in my notes. So I, I uh, you and I are kind of similar in that regard. Um, you you I, two are a, a great company, Wayne. Uh, uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson would do the same about their crops, about everything. You see, Rob? Yeah, I, yeah I, right I, up I there. Have, yeah, Lincoln, that, Highlander, Washington, <laughs> definitely <laughs> right up there with them. Thanks, Sprague. You couldn't have used anybody <laughs> else. You know, Abbott and Costello, something like that. You had to go with <laughs> Famous president. Yeah. Well, you yeah, guys exactly. are legends. Well, you, while, you, you want to talk about? Go ahead. No, I was going to say while while we got to you know we're talking about color and we have a color expert on here, I'm going to throw it out there that you guys should both be uh, uh, interested in this product. We just came out with Bona Red Out that will take the red out of uh, out of red oak uh, instead of bleaching oh, nice. the floors. You, you know what? I, I we just had a meeting about this, Wayne. And we said, look, we're white oak is getting a little difficult to get. So a lot of our suppliers say we have a lot of red oak. And they, so what we're making is the sample white oak next to red oak with, with, with your product on there, natural, and then with a light stain and with a dark stain. And, and I, I think that's fantastic. Can you, can you enlighten us a little bit about that product? Yeah, Rob. Rob can probably go into a little bit more detail than I am because he's a. Oh, uh, it's huge. Um, the last uh, last two nights of this week, I've been doing uh, color schools, and we've been using the red out on the color schools. Um, one of the things I will say about that red out is you definitely don't watch it dry because when you start watching it dry, you're thinking, "Oh my God, this <laughs> you know this stuff is not working," you know. But you do two. Um, you know, you do two rounds of it. It's a part one and a part two. You do two rounds of that, and you really let that sit for a good six hours, and 
it'll blow you away how good it looks. Because like I said, we were doing um, these color schools at night. And, you know, the first one we did, we were kind of staring at the red out and we're like, oh, my God, this this stuff doesn't work, you know, and everybody's standing there. And then and, and I'm just lying to everybody. I'm like, hell, look at that. There's no pink there. And they're like, yeah, yeah I can tell there there was. But we went back to that. Uh, we went back the next morning and I'm like, OK, this is how we get to show this stuff. We have to have a panel completely done. that's cooked for a while that really it'll blow you away when you see it like that so the following night following night we did the same thing how about like uh, brazilian cherry or other species well um last night uh we did a bunch of brazilian champ uh samples with it and it turns it uh like a medium brown i mean a real okay. real medium brown it looked really good on the brazilian cherry that, that's that's good to hear. That's fantastic. European, there's some European products that uh, used to be just, you know, n known as industrial, you know, where where you get um, 50 train loads of, of Euro oak and it's just too pink for your, for the skews that you're running. And, uh, and so they had to have, I mean, you're talking about a million dollars worth of product there that is going in the wrong direction. And so it's a, it's a really interesting concept. And it's literally, um, if you talk to anybody who's been in the business long enough, there's a repair that's been done and the guy put red oak in and it, then this floor gets sanded and everybody looks at it and and they say well this is a white oak floor you did the repair you fingered in you laced in half the job now is red oak half the job is white oak we've all been there and it is a real challenge and you can never change that grain pattern right yeah. but what is really really interesting if you study the red oak white oak connection is if you look at rift only which is the darling of every modern architect and designer for five years, or 10 years. If you look at rift only red oak and rift only white oak, there's very little grain difference. Now you manipulate that red oak rift only to look the way you want it. And you call it rift only oak. Mm -hmm. You got Now some. you're three bucks because the red oak rift is significantly less per board foot than the than the than the rift only and white. more readily available and more ready more yeah, readily yeah available. yeah that's yeah. here and hell that you're interested in red oak and red oak is really taking a beating in the in the market right now uh so there is red oak out there and knowing what to do with it is is going to give you a leg up in a big way you know uh, another thing that uh when you guys were talking about your project and having the odor um back in the 80s pete and i uh, we did tons of white floors and everything we would do would be one or two coats of bleach and boy that smell would just knock everybody out of the house that was what really uh shocked me about the red out was there is absolutely no odor to that. I mean, no smell at all. So I think I, that's going to help in a lot of situations. I can't wait to play with that. I, I am really excited to see that Bona. Uh, what is it called? Red Out? Red Out. Red Out. Yep. Yeah, I'll tell you, when you put part one on the floor, that's going to blow your mind. I mean, it does things to that floor that it, it – it was insane it was crazy but yeah very simple to use too if you haven't uh used it yet uh it goes down 500 feet a gallon goes down very thin you just roll it on and you let the part one sit for about 15 minutes you know 15 20 minutes tops and then roll the part two right over it even if it's still a little wet don't worry about it 
you'll still get good reaction there. So you don't want to let that Rob, you, you, part Rob, one completely Rob, you, dry. It, you know what it kind of smells like? What's that? Team Spirit? Like, it smell, no, it <laughs> smells like money. That's what it smells like. <laughs> like because style. you're going to make money. It's a win-win. Because a lot of these builders, <laughs> even if you're putting in white oak, they got red oak stairs 95% of the time. So you're yeah. going to have to deal with it one way or another. And, it, and you're going to have the solution if you do your due diligence with all your uh, samples and uh, get finished products like Rob was talking about, finished samples. But um, what relationships are we going to talk about there, Mr. Wayne, about our distributor? Or... Before you, I, I've been very patient. Uh, yeah. You know what, guys? Uh, this hey, is, do that. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm cutting in here. This is, this is painful for Wayne. We've gone about 15 minutes and he has not been able to talk. So everybody just shut okay. down your mics and let him go. Go okay. ahead, buddy. It's all okay. you. Boy, really, really sit here. This is going to be, you're going to love this, Rob. Uh, <laughs> Steve, uh, that scenario that you were talking about where guys have accidentally toothed in red oak, you know, into a white oak floor. Uh, Rob has done it so much that we were almost going to call this Rob out. <laughs> oh, wow. Huh? Thanks it for the you, lead. Thanks for the lead 50. in, Rob. <laughs> took you 15 minutes. Took you 15 minutes to come up with that one. That a you know boy. Uh, You're right you know, on top of it today. That was, worth, that was worth the wait. I think a, there you go. He didn't, a, he didn't hear a word any of us said no. for the last 15 minutes. He's just been working on that joke. I've just been waiting to get that in. Um, <laughs> okay, so relationships. And actually, this is a, this is a, a great one right here. It, it even to have Steve on right here because uh, what you guys obviously share is, is a trust, right? A shared experience. And um, yep. I, there is just nothing like being able to bounce something off somebody else, get someone else's opinion. We all have different expertise in different areas. Um, so I think this is important to talk about. And I think let's start talking about with distribution. Uh, your relationship with your distributors, which I think is so important. Um, I mean, these careers are, you know, 20, 30, look, you're 70 years in as a company. That's amazing to me. I mean, that's, I mean, hats off, man, that's incredible. Um, and that comes with a lot of relationships and a lot of respect. So maybe you guys can talk about how important your relationship with your, with your distribution. Well, let me start out. This is Sprig with, 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 we don't deal with one so-called distributor. We, we deal with multiple ones. We don't put all our eggs in one basket, even though we have great service from a lot of them. Uh, we like to deal with several of them uh, in, in case something happens or uh, we need to move on to another distributor. Everything's already set up. But uh, we find that distributors are very, very receptive when we ask them for training. We ask them for we want the knowledge to be filtered down. Sometimes we got to leapfrog over our distributor and go straight to say Bona to our manufacturer. And Wayne, I've called you uh, uh, many times, and 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 you all are 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 giving us the information. We're not buying from you, but we just thirst for that information. And sometimes that information doesn't get filtered down. So instead of the contractor losing faith or or forgetting about it or not pursuing it. They can go to the manufacturer and, and talk to them. It, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. It seems to help us quite a bit. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. Uh, it's, 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 it's essential that you know the best practices. It's essential that you know, you know, um, but for example, you know, when you guys at Bona are writing the, you know, directions on the back of the can, um, I don't get a memo that says, P.S., the directions change, so reread them. So I read them every time. And I say, oh, I've read them before. And luckily, I well read and, and can read quickly. But I read the damn directions because I'm the user. And I want to be successful. And by the way, finish isn't getting any cheaper. So... It's an investment, and I want to I want to return on the investment. Yeah. So I read the directions. Uh, well, and and I think what you said also, Spring, was important because um, you, you know there is three relate. There's three things here. There's a manufacturer, there's a distributor, and there's the contractor. 
and nobody wins in a claim. It's not fun for anybody. It's not fun for the contractor, especially. It's not for the distributor or the manufacturer. So that open line of communication, I think, is important. And um, nobody wants to find out after the fact that maybe something could have been done or what have you. So I, I think that that alone is a key reason for, for keeping those lines open. For sure. Yes, I, I agree 100%. And uh, honestly, like when I, I just I just picked up your quick your quick reference guide for your bone adhesives. That's fantastic. It's a notebook and it has a quick go to cheat sheet for me. These are little things that that mean a lot to at least us, the contractor. Yeah, especially we, we, if you're in this and you're wondering which one's going to get you the most bang for your buck. Yeah, hundred percent. And we just had to put those out in Spanish. Keep me out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the from peer to peer uh, relationships, uh, reaching across the uh, different. I mean, that's the nice thing. One thing about social media and all this that we can talk to people cr across the country that have. Uh, I mean, you go back twenty years, thirty years ago. If you had a problem, you're kind of on your own, you know. Versus today, right? Right, one hundred percent. No one would want to share knowledge. Period. You know, we were taught. We're doing something unusual and someone came on the, the job site, you put your tools down and be polite and quit working. Don't show anyone anything. Yeah. Guard, guard your trade. Now it's it's the wild west. Everyone's throwing everything out there. The big difference. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For for and for the good. It's um I understand both sides of that. When in your market, if you work on, uh, let's say you work in the uh, DC um, metro area and um, your competitors know that if you ask you a question, Sprig, that you'll be, you'll freely share that information, then, um, then, then sometimes people that want to take the fast and easy way and just you know, not learn, they just ask the question and go with it it's kind of gives them an unfair advantage or it appears sometimes to give them an unfair advantage. And I understand why people would say, I don't want to share that information, but honestly, having someone to talk to and be able to bounce, you know, it doesn't even matter if you're talking about the mineral of that's on your 120 paper, or if it's, um, the brand of applicator because you like to pull rather than roll. I can't tell you how many times I've asked about different roller covers and what do you like? And some guys are, at, you know, I, I don't take any of it as gospel truth, but I do want to know what is successful and, and how to be better because that's our mission statement is to always try and be better. And, um, you know, it's, it's sharing information and having that, that um, position that of mentor, friend, confidant, all rolled into one. Like I always used to think Sprig was older than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look a lot, a lot younger. But... <laughs> He's not. And, hey, hey, listen. You, years ago, years ago, before we would uh, give the knowledge out freely, we we had a contractor in my area who was always calling me, asking me questions, and he knew we water popped a lot of floors. And he 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 said, "I've never done it. What what can I do?" And he bugged the living heck out of me. I'm not going to tell you who he is because you might know who who he is, but. I, for two years, I sold the guy special water that I got down to the grocery <laughs> store. It took took the label. For two years, it was it was uh, uh, forty dollars a gallon. I said, "You got to yeah. use this or the mineral." You know, I made up all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And like I said, "You son of a, you're on vacation. <laughs> I needed it." And uh, I went down, got regular water, it worked fine. So <laughs> if people aren't willing to go out and and learn, and they just want the easy hanging fruit, and, and just call someone. You got to get yeah. out there and put some time into it, or or you're going to get the forty dollar water. 
that, there you uh, go. Yeah, that was good markup. <laughs> I think that's what we'll call he, this show. That's what we'll call this show, $40 water. <laughs> before, <laughs> before we jump off this topic, you know, I think that it's important every once in a while. Like, I'll be working on something in the shop, and I'll have a, 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 a bunch of colors out, and I'll be chasing one particular thing that I think is interesting. And either my brother, Dave, who I work with every day, or Linda, who runs the office, they'll come down and ask me a question, or someone will stop by and say, oh, who's that for? Who's that color for? And I say, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have an owner yet. Mm-hmm. This is the color I'm working on. Yep. And once I once I once I get this color, you can have a lot of owners. Right? That's yep. There's trends. There's things that are that are trending. And now with social media and all the T V shows and all that kind of stuff, you know, it, it's it's everywhere all the time. It's like uh, electricity buzzing around. There's also things that that you know there's there's directions that you need to take to push the envelope and and make cool shit, honestly so sometimes the things that i'm working on don't have there it's not for a project it just doesn't have an owner yet interesting they're just things I cool. so you know and and my rule was always this if i respected you as a competitor i would share my information with you if I feel like, you know what, you, 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 you know, as somebody that he charges where he needs to charge and everything, and, and, and is somebody I, I respect his, his work, if he asked me a question, I would be pretty, pretty giving of my information. It's like, to your point, Sprig, when somebody just wants a quick and easy uh, answer without putting the work in, in my eyes, anyhow, then that would be, I'd be less willing to, to be forthright with, uh, with uh, information. And um, I yeah, remember that. Go ahead. I was saying we, we would have them come look through the windows in the garage to see what we were mixing and how we we're mixing. And literally the guys would make up props, different, different things to throw them off. And, and, <laughs> and they would go in there and take pictures of it. It, it was the biggest joke in the world. But uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no I changed the name of this episode to the dark side of Sprake. That's what this one <laughs> Well, that, that that when I got out of the witness protection program, yeah. I um, I turned yeah. around. Now I, I I freely give all information, 100 percent the gospel. Oh, yeah, he's he, he's unprotected now. So yeah. I I always I I mean there's secrets and then there's just an average question. And when a peer, right, and defined peer that's defined by different you know, criteria, but when a colleague or a peer locally calls me with a question and says, Hey, what do you think? I got a, I got a problem with this. You know, uh, I always try and help them. I always try and help them because, uh, and Sprig and I were talking about this earlier, you know, when the tide rises, all boats rise with it. And we have a really, whoa, 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 what, what did he just say? Yeah, it came so easy for him. How did he do that? We, we've been trying to say that and get that right for, for three years now, Steve. We keep screwing that up. Okay. All right. Well, wait a minute. Well, you know, a, cu- a couple minutes ago, Steve said, uh, before we change topics, and I thought, oh, okay, so this is on the floor with Steve and Sprig now. He's, <laughs> he's leading the conversation. <laughs> but now that he just nailed the – what did – Say that again. I'll, I'll, when the tide rises, all boats rise with it. Write that down, Rob. Yeah, but I'll still screw it up. Okay, write this one down, I won't Rob. Read it. On the floor with Steve and Sprig, or Sprig and Steve. Steve and Sprig, who's older? I, 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 I got one request. We would like a bell, some type of bell. Yeah, you need one. one bells. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And, and also, you, you could sit, don't worry about the mule going blind. Just sit in the saddle and hold the lines. Nah, I like your style. Right, so I, <laughs> well, so, hey, we we want to go ahead. We 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 have good we have good we have really good talented um, technicians here, and 
in Minneapolis and we have a good work ethic. And I think it's because there is a little bit of sharing, you know, it's not too much, but it's just enough. And, um, and it's very competitive. I, I'm a competitive person and, and I like competing and I enjoy it. And, um, but, you know, when it's just a straight up question and it's not a trade secret, I'm, I'm happy to share that info. And there's a couple guys that i John Crow in Santa Cruz and Sprig Lynn in DC and John Urema in, in the Detroit area and Peter West in New York and, and his kid, Nick. And I, I mean, there's people that I call and bounce stuff off of on a regular basis. And, and it's things that I already know, but I need confirmation I'm on the right track because I'm uh, conservative in risk and I want to be successful the first time. And um, it's very expensive to redo a whole project. And, and, and so, you know, that's why, that's why I, I like to, you know, help and share and all that sort of thing. Well, but here, anyway. that, here's what I think has changed uh, when it comes to sharing information. I think as the industry has gotten smaller and, and we, we certainly we need more help and everybody is looking for, for whatever, I think it's almost like, look, we're all in this together now. I mean, there's a lot of work out there. Uh, we got to help each other. Yep. And I think yep. I've looked at the industry completely differently after I, after I, the, the more I learned and as I got older and, and actually when I got more secure in myself that, you know, what I, I don't, I, I'll share whatever and then and maybe I'll learn something off the next guy and, and I became more willing. And actually the NWFA did that a lot for me was when I realized who the hell am I to keep this to myself when I'm learning something from Sprig and from, from Gene, from Renaissance floors and, 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 and Peter and all these guys you mentioned, I mean, um, Man, I'm no better than anybody else, and certainly I got a lot to learn myself. So, uh, the NWFA for me, uh, going to the schools when I started realizing that you know what, sharing is uh, raises all tides in the <laughs> boats, or something like that. <laughs> hey, it's it, it, it way it's a fast track to knowledge. I mean, experience yeah. is an expensive endeavor, and if you could cut that down and cut down on the cost of going through that experience and call someone and uh, get some good sound knowledge. It, it's phenomenal. Yeah. The NWFA and all these other classes really, really help out. You always come away with something, something you got to open I, that mind up. Yeah. Those I think if training there, classes, they're not too bad either. If there were, if there what? was more, I said, those and, bonus and, training classes, they're not too bad either. Spray. And and Jeff Shees, I call that guy twenty four seven. That guy's on the. That guy's like a emergency hotline operator. <laughs> I call that guy. He will answer that damn phone. He goes, "Sprig, I was in the shower." I said, "We need to get a waterproof phone there, Jeff." Uh, he started laughing. I said, "Okay." I, I said, "I hope you got your clothes on now that you're talking to me." He said, "Yeah, I got my clothes on." Oh Lord, have mercy. I. I think that if there was one thing that I think should happen more often that me personally, because I travel around and do projects with, I get the pleasure of working with different crews all over the place. Um, and I learn something every time. I either learn how not to do something or I learned to be more patient. There's a time to go fast and there's a time to take your, take a moment and get your together. Uh -huh. um, and, and I don't know what that moment is called, but it, I think we know what I'm talking about. And uh, with, when I go to different markets and I've worked uh, from Hawaii to the Mediterranean and the, it's, it doesn't matter. Everyone has the same issues. Everyone's got, a, you know, wishes they had a better tack cloth. Everybody's got, a, you know, everyone has the same. Everybody's, when you're ready to get going and everybody's tapping their pockets saying, hey, where'd my cutting brush go? 
everybody, they might be saying it in a different language, yeah. but knowing, knowing we all have the same issues is empowering. And knowing yep. that you can learn something from everybody, it doesn't, they don't have to be a big fancy company. They can just be a little company you've never heard of that's really good. 100%. I totally agree with that. In fact, I was, I was kind of laughing to myself, Steve, when you were talking about roller covers. <clears throat> because at one, one time I, I was on a journey to find the, the, the best roller cover. And it was like an obsession to me. I was outside our industry, into the boating industry, into all other kind of industries to find, find the right uh, roller cover. So uh, we all have the same challenges. You can see my, my voice is getting worse by the minute. No, no, it's not. Sounds fine. <laughs> you sound really good. Yep, um, we're getting coming down with something. Um, I will say too, though, that not all relationships are good. Um, <laughs> I, I had a, I had a. Amen. I, Amen. I had not a. All relationships are good. Yep, I get it, Rob. Don't require bells. Yeah, I had a, I had a an office worker one time who used to relish giving me bad news. <laughs> I mean, she'd say, Wayne, uh, you know, that job, that the job that's starting Monday. I go, yeah. She goes, well, it's off the books. <laughs> they, they changed the schedule. The kid's not going to be gone, blah, blah, blah. And, and just love to, to give me bad news. So I, I also learned that you gotta, there, there's some toxic relationships out there. <laughs> so, um, uh, I think you kind of also learn to steer clear from from some of those, uh, you know, where I want to go and, and, and the things I want to accomplish. Uh, sometimes there's there's some relationships you do need to stay away from. Sometimes Rob. the best job is one you don't take. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, so um, we haven't talked about co-worker relationships with some of the uh, toughest ones, Rob. Um, I hear you, Wayne. Right? You know, I know what I'm talking about. Um, Time to clear your throat. And because those relationships are the uh, are the longest every day. You're every day you're talking to these people and, and dealing with these people, working together. And some of those are, you know, every, not everybody's on, on in sync this, at the same time. So maybe you can kind of talk about those too uh, and uh, how to navigate through some of those. And go. We've never had that that issue. <laughs> Steve, what do you got to say there, buddy? I wish that I wish that um, the sometimes I think that the thought in my head doesn't match the words coming out of my mouth, and I'm very straightforward, and I um, and I like to do. I like to I like to move quickly and I like to get things done and and uh, just this morning I was I was um, I was saying something in the shop and after I said it I thought I can't believe I just said that because that's not what I wanted to say and I didn't I didn't want my guys to feel like I didn't value what it is that they were doing and I do take the time and say you know even when I get a pat on the back right. I tell, I, I tell my customer, I can't do anything. Literally, I can't, I can make a family, but I can't do a project without my team. These guys are the ones that are making me look good. You know, they're awesome. They're great. Hey, Sprig, Sprig, what's the, what, Sprig, what's the uh, secret to your success with your guys? I mean, I follow you guys on Instagram. I see a lot of the projects, um, but they always look happy. Even, I, I, you know, I, I mean, think, that one project I, they did with your dad's coffin was just, you know, amazing. But a lot of the other projects, your guys always seem to be working in sync, but always seem to be pleasant. I had one of your guys out at my uh, training in New Jersey. Uh, I think it was back in March. And just a very, very happy person. So now there's got to be something you're doing that well, you know, isn't really we, you. We, uh, uh, there's multiple things besides paying them well and on, and on time uh, that we, we try to put 
the right person on the right job, just like a ball team. When you put the wrong person on the wrong job, they're going to fail. And, and we feel that's a failure of management. If you put someone into a position where you, they're doing a black floor or a white floor and they'll probably fail, they'll probably fail. So we try to pick and choose the jobs that will complement that person. And uh, some people have an eye for color, like Steve, and some people don't. So we try not to put them in that situation. And, and we notice when there is a problem, we honestly try, obviously we gotta look after the customer. We gotta resolve the problem. Then we sit back, instead of pointing fingers, what went wrong, why it went wrong, and uh, try, to, try to correct that. But uh, I, I think we do look for so-called happier people, personally. That's awesome. That's you know, brilliant. if you got a that's, disgruntled that's, person, it's time. It's time to go. You know, you know, I can't make <laughs> you make you happy, but uh, just like you were saying, there's some bad bad ones out there, and you got to cut bait sometimes. Yeah. But uh, yeah. We, we're we're always trying to replace the weakest link, slowly but surely, and improve the talent. But if that's the secret, I always say someone's got to go, and it ain't going to be me. <laughs> I feel you looking directly at me when yeah, you said that's that. All, that's, you were, that's all right. Yeah. yeah, that's all right. That's awesome, Sprig. I mean, that's uh, that's the key to team building. I think is just everybody's got a role. Know what your role is. Perfect. I love right. that answer. Right. But it, but you know, if a guy wants, if a guy, I I think it's also important to say what you know. You, you take one of your valuable players and using the baseball game thing, you know, and if he's good at second base, you know, it, it's great. It's awesome. You should play second base, but occasionally you want to ask that second baseman, you know, you good. How you feeling? How you doing? Um, you want to, you know, you want to try, you know, cross training. You want to try, uh, you want to try a different, um, you know, I mean, you want to be able, you want to, we compensate with money, but you also compensate with satisfaction of job well done and them fulfilling their, whatever their need is. And if they want to learn more, I think it's important to give them the chance to learn some more. Yeah. And to so, grow. Well, most so four we, guys are, are so, so busy, Steve, telling Hey, do this, coat that, sand this. No one ever asks them, hey, what do you think? Well, is there something that we can do better? You know? Not that uh, I, I want to develop a bunch of snowflakes, but you know, sometimes we have to ask them. <laughs> Maybe that's not politically correct, but no, we do ask, hey, what, what can we do? And you'd be surprised what kind of answers you get. Yeah. Um, so going back to relationships, is there anything else we're missing on this? <clears throat> well, yeah. I, I, I think a, a important part is when, when we do a, a, a job for a builder, you have a relationship with the builder, but rarely does the floor contractor ask, who's the architect? Is there a designer involved? Because that architect in turn is doing 10 to 15 builders of that like builder and that's potential work right there. And then if there's a designer involved, they're, they're designing jobs all over the place. So some people cut themselves short by developing the relationship with the architect. Because the architect, you can be their knowledge center and you can be their sample center and you'd be surprised what doors that open opens for you. What do you think, Steve? A absolutely. Yeah, I, I went to a class at, uh, in front of uh, the classes in the morning before the NWFA show at the convention and Chris Coates and uh, I don't know, it was somebody else that wasn't Chris Coates was talking about A and D, you know, architects and designers and how to interface with them. And um, they're hungry. They have an idea they don't want to recommend the wrong person because it's the splashback is is 
horrific. Mm -hmm. Uh, they need to trust someone to be able to help their, the bubble above their head, their idea come to life. And it's, uh, a hundred feet or a thousand feet or 10,000 feet, uh, 10,000 feet is a driver. You, your house depends on the, the products that you put on and how they wear, do they wear in a, on a, in an authentic way? What is the, you know, what is the slip, uh, coefficient ratio is it a slippery floor is it a sticky floor can you clean it uh uh well is it abrasion resistant to dogs the, the blah you know the whole that whole nine yards but a and d architects and designers are where i focus my efforts and that drives a first right of refusal on a lot of different projects They'll say, hey, do you have a man? Hey, Wayne, I got a question for you. Uh, before you close up that mic, I, I just want to talk about we're in a recession or the beginnings of recession or going through a recession. Because uh, I've been through boom and bust many, many times. I've seen hard times and I've seen good times. And it's just like uh, spring always follows winter. After recession, there will be an upturn. But People out there got to understand they got to cherish every job they get. They got to cut their overhead and they got to be mindful of what they're doing now to, to get through it because everybody can, not everyone's going to get through certain hard times, but it's best to, to face it right now and cherish every job and chase it down like it's your last and to get through it. And I, I think right. it's important because it's going to hit some people and blindsided. I, I see things tightening up out there, and it's going to it's going to be all over the place for distributors, manufacturers, contractors, builders, you name it. But we found the cut 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 your fist fixed costs as fast as possible. Your overhead, your insurance, whatever you can do to reduce it, your rent, whatever you can do to reduce it, and and, and I think take each job. I think you're, you. Your accounts receivable uh, that are paid in yep. a timely fashion will cut your overhead because you won't be carrying your customers. Yep, yep. And good point. Um, accounts receivable in in this climate are um, are are tricky because you know we're not the only ones in jeopardy. The the builder that's playing. Uh, you know, with uh, a, a deck and a half of cards, and he's all—it's always worked for him in the past. If that guy, if that guy goes belly up, and he owes you a bunch of money, then, then that's not good. You're not going to get that money. Yeah. And and the piece of paper that that judgment is written on is worth the piece of paper that it's written on. Yeah. Don't be afraid to cut cut off a builder. You some you got to draw a line in the sand. Uh, and your accounts payable. If you can't make that full full payment to that distributor, you need to call them up on the phone. Don't go into the witness protection program and disappear. Yep. You That's say here, I can pay you half. I can pay you a quarter. As long as you make timely payments, that guy will respect you, and you'll keep that 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 material coming to you. But you you gotta you, you gotta send them something. That that is uh that is so 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 smart. Such good information right there in, in this share because yeah you you wanna you know it, the tendency for some people is well gosh I can't show my face there. Uh, you're gonna need that distributor, so you would really definitely want to go in there and work something out with them if you get that gets to be the case. But yeah, send them something, keep that relationship going. If you know in the worst case scenario. And what Absolutely. a great way to keep that relationship where you do go to them and say hey. You know, we're all in this together. I'm going to, I'm not going like, anywhere. I like what you said there, Sprague. Don't go into witness protection. Sit down, <laughs> talk it out with them. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they know what you're going through. That's, Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. You, you, you pay them a quarter a loaf, a fifth of a loaf. Just keep keep that, keep that. That's right. You, nobody's going to cut right. you off if you're really honestly trying. And they've been through it, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. For yeah. sure. 
Very good point. Well, that's great. That's a great uh, that's a great way to sign off, Sprague. Thanks. Yep. Um, well, you can tell my voice is getting worse by this by the second here. So, uh, Steve, I'm glad you came on. And I'd actually like to have you back on. Yeah, that, yeah there was a I, we the, the the conversation about colors is a long conversation, and and with, I know we can go a hundred different directions. So yeah, I appreciate it you is. coming on. And uh, it <clears> is. Spring, it's, go ahead. Yes, sir. It's it's nice talking to you guys too. Um, uh, I think you know we we've touched on a bunch of different topics, but. Uh, the witness protection program is probably the most interesting one. Spring, you know, <laughs> worry about you. Hey, I, I tell you what, if if anyone's listening to this podcast, and hopefully there's millions of them, <laughs> if they got a question Anybody. from one of us or they got a question from me, feel free to call me. I, I, I love to talk floors. This is all I've talked my whole life. So uh, I'm out there for anyone I can help. Except for that guy that that got that water, that overpriced water. <laughs> well, look, well, that's very generous of you, uh, Sprague, for that. I appreciate that. And and uh, Steve, I know the same. So we'll put the information out there, everybody's information out there. And uh, thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Thank sorry you. About, sorry about my. Have a voice. good weekend. Yeah, you guys do the same. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, guys. Right. Bye bye. How about you wrap that up uh, instead of me, uh, Rob? Oh, my poor buddy's voice. You know, guys, uh, before we started the show, I said, Wayne, your voice sounds uh, your voice sounds funny. You okay? And he's like, my voice is fine. My voice is fine. <laughs> I did. And now, two hours later, you can't speak, okay? You tell me I shouldn't be working for Teladoc. Look. I heard it just like that. You're good. Feel better, buddy. I try to power through. Hey, this has been another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for our next episode. Oh, yeah.